Are you in there? Come on, get with it. Today we're gonna do some cooking with cold cracker, okay? Chicken corn chowder with dumplings. Get ready. So we haven't done a cooking with cold cracker video for a while and uh, part of that reason, not that I'm not eating out here because I love to eat, but part of that reason, it's just hot and slaving over a campfire. Ugh, didn't want to do it, but it's starting to cool down. See, the leaves are changing. Plus, I got a new one of these. You know these time pressure cooker bombs that we put in the campfire? This is the smaller version. Last time I had the larger version. And then they make even a larger version. We'll use that in a future video. Um, these things are really great though because they're fast, easy. I thought it was gonna start to rain. That's why it looks a little bit dark out today because I thought the rain was gonna roll in. So even if it's raining, this thing has the food covered and it's just pressure cooking. So it's great, the campfire pressure cooker by uh, Mangrills. So that's what we're gonna be using, but it's more about the recipe. It's more about delicious food. I can't wait to eat, I'm excited. Let's get started. For this recipe, you'll need the following item. Chicken, corn, carrots, celery, potatoes, pepper, onion, chicken bouillon, flour, half and half, and a handful of barley. Step one when cooking with cold crackers is to cut up all your vegetables. Now as I cut this up, I'm just gonna throw it directly into my pot. So uh, get this all opened up. Once I get them cut up, they just go right into the pot. You would think if you're a master knife smith like me, like I can handle a blade. Nah, I don't fight, but point is, you think I do that cool chopping thing the chefs do? I have no idea how they do that. I am not a culinary master. One of my favorite parts of cooking in the woods is just the pure mayhem and fury I can unleash on things. I can let stuff fall on the ground, I don't have to worry about it, I don't have to clean it up, my wife's not yelling at me. Wonderful. And it's starting to rain. Ugh. All right, we're gonna have to move this show onto the cabin porch. But first I get my fire stoked up. You start out with the best intentions and you know it might rain, but you're hoping it doesn't rain. And then next thing you know, it's raining. Now we gotta move from that gorgeous setting to this gorgeous setting. I hope the lighting is okay. Oh. So my sincere apologies um, of mother nature not cooperating. We're gonna have to film here on the cabin porch. I shut the cabin door so you don't see a black hole and there's also the nice snowshoes and you're gonna hear the, the pinging of middle roof. It's actually pretty relaxing and it's very comforting to do this, so uh, let's just keep on going. Let me get the food ready. Okay, so all the vegetables are in. I had freeze-dried corn, so I'm just gonna add freeze-dried corn into this, okay? You can use fresh corn, that is gonna be absolutely fine. The barley, you can put as much or as little as you want in. It helps thicken everything up. So I like to put about three quarters of a cup of that in. Now your chicken, I like to cut this up on the smaller side. I'll just cube it up in a really, really nice little small cubes. I think it uh, does so much better here. It's gonna cook and get super tender anyway, but uh, the little cubes I like the way that they break down and once they cook. Okay, so as I'm pulling my things out, the, the half and half, at the end, once your soup or stew is almost totally finished, I like to put some of this in and then mix it around. It's gonna thicken up, it's gonna give it a little bit of creaminess. So that's saved towards the end. I don't cook with that initially. Pepper, I'm just gonna put a good amount of pepper in there. And then lastly is our dumpling. So for that, I'm just gonna take some flour and I'm going to put that in a bowl, okay? If you use a handful of flour, is gonna be more than enough dumplings for this. 
And then if you're in our bushcraft class, you would know how to properly cook the dumplings, but I'm gonna help you out here. So you can add a little bit of water. Don't add too much because you want this to be to the point that it forms a dough. So a little bit of water literally goes a long way here with these. So don't be afraid to uh, go light on the water, okay? Okay, so a good sign that your dumpling dough is where it needs to be is all of the dough isn't sticking to your hands, okay? You're gonna have some flour residue there, but not a lot of dough. So what I like to do is literally just make a patty. If it feels um, sticky anywhere, then by all means, you can either add a little bit more flour or um, just realize you add too much water, but um, you should be good. I think everybody can handle this. Just break chunks of this off and throw this inside. These are going to be our dumplings. Now, if you want to form your dumplings and be all pretty with this, hey, it's your stew. You do whatever you like. I'm going to just show you what I'm doing because it's making my life easy. And then lastly, we're going to put in our chicken bouillon cubes, okay? Now, I like to, with this specifically, and most of the time when I cook, not just throw these in. I like to take some warm water and get these dissolved and then add that in. So I'm gonna go throw some water onto the fire right now and get that hot. I should have did this while I was processing everything, but I didn't think ahead. I didn't think ahead on this one. So let me get that done, put the lid on this, and th I'll talk to you more. Oh. Right, you crazy bushcrafters. So I got my water hot, dissolved the chicken bouillon and then I'm gonna add water. So one thing I want you to keep in mind with this is that when you make this, all right, you need to remember you're making like a chowder. So you don't wanna to put too much water in that it is like real soupy and you don't wanna put it in it, it's like super, super thick. You gotta find that happy medium. So with something like this pressure cooker, I'm gonna fill about two inches over my ingredients is how much I'm gonna do. And I can always add a little bit more. If I was cooking this in a Dutch oven, I would do pretty much all the same stuff as I'm doing right now except for the fact that I would have to add water throughout the process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this lid on here because I am hungry, like real hungry. And we're gonna go put this thing on the fire. Now at this point, I'm just gonna let that thing cook. Um, if you've never seen one of these pressure cookers for over the campfire, when it starts to steam, you just wanna regulate that that steam is consistent. You don't want the secondary valve start going off, just let it go like that. And then all you do is grab that top handle and roll it around a little bit to mix up the ingredients, but it comes out really, really well every time because it's trapping everything in there. So I'm gonna just let that cook and um, hopefully these hunger pains start going away because the meal is getting closer. Oh. Okay, so right now, pot's off. With this specific cook system, you have to give it a little bit of time to air out. So you need all that pressure to come out before you open up the lid, otherwise it just whoosh, overflows and goes everywhere. So I'm gonna give it some time, that's gonna give it some time to cool down too, and then we'll add our half and half or heavy cream, mix it up, and we're just about ready to go. All right, just so gonna open this thing up. Now that it cooled down a good bit. Ooh yeah, check this out. Nice. So you can see right now that it's still a little watery. If I wanted to cook this any further, I could, but I think when I add my cream in, and uh, let it sit a little bit, it's gonna thicken up and it's gonna be absolutely perfect. All right, so let's add a little bit of this. Give it a little mix. That was a taste test, so uh, this stuff looks great. It smells really good. I'll say my pre-assumption of it is that I made it very bland. 
I didn't add a lot of extra stuff to it. One, I didn't have a lot of extra spices here with me. Um, but two, if you start with a good base recipe and you find something you really, really like, adding extra stuff when you're at camp, be it bacon, ham hocks, um, red pepper, red pepper flakes, hot sauce, any of that stuff, salsa makes more awesome. Really good. It's not that watery, soupy type of stuff I don't like, and it uh, has it actually has really good flavor from the corn and uh, onions and celery and stuff. Great, good flavor. This thing came out awesome. So um, I hope you try this recipe. I'll put it in the description below. Everything you need, and then uh, play around with it. Add some stuff. Take some stuff away if you don't like it. But it's a good base, it's a good camp recipe. This time of the year, it's cooler out. Having a nice hearty stew, soup, chowder, whatever you wanna call this thing. Great time at camp. Team this up with a beer and you'd be good to go. So this was Dan Wolbach with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cooking with Cold Cracker. As always, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com and until the next video, stay in the woods. Mm.